Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm going to be playing some battles on the online ranked ladder for Pokemon Sword and Shield with an Evolution team. I actually used an Evolution team built by the exact same player, Viking VGC, a couple of months ago, and that was such a fun video, such a fun episode, honestly one of my favorite videos from Sword and Shield. So if you haven't seen that, I'll link it down in the description below, but today we are trying out a brand new Evolution team. We've got a lot of new sets to try out here. We've got Flareon, we've got Glaceon, Vaporeon, and Espeon, so I can't wait to play some more games with it here. And it's the last week of Sword and Shield. It feels really crazy that, yeah, we've reached the end of this three-year cycle, but it has been such an honor to make these videos for all of you. And I've been taking a little bit more time off in the last few weeks really to just decompress and chill out for a little bit. But I'm so hyped, obviously, for Scarlet and Violet. I have so much planned for you all. You don't even know. But thank you so much, as always, for watching and supporting this channel. It's been an amazing journey. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, I do a quick breakdown of the team in the beginning. So if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamps in the description below. But thanks so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoy. I really appreciate it. And question of the day, I want to know what your overall favorite team, either casually in-game or competitively in all of Sword and Shield was down in the comment section below. Let's get started. I wanted to just briefly highlight that I think Viking VGC, the team creator, has done such an amazing job maximizing the value of Pokemon that are objectively just not very strong in this format. Right, using Espeon, Vaporeon, Flareon, Glaceon in a format with these ultra-powerful legendaries and restricted seems kind of wild, but I think this team is a great example of how you can make any Pokemon work, but, you know, you have to work harder often for Pokemon that have worse stats or worse typing or worse move pools, right? But my point here is that I think Viking has done a really cool job maximizing the value of these Pokemon and finding ways to make them work and finding sets that can really actually allow you to win battles, right? Which is really critical. So at the end of the day, I just think that's really cool. And you can make any Pokemon work in competitive Pokemon, but you have to work a lot harder often for those that are objectively worse. And in my opinion, like the, it's hard to build around the evolutions, but this team does such a good job of actually maximizing their value. So the first Pokemon I want to talk about here is Espeon. Now, Espeon's an interesting pick. It's actually really speedy, base 110 and base 130 special attack, but it actually has Trick Room here, and you're probably wondering, okay, why in the world would you use Trick Room on such a fast Pokemon? Well, the idea is twofold. One, your opponents don't expect Trick Room as much on a Pokemon like Espeon because it's fast, and two, this team doesn't really have that much good natural speed control, so setting up Trick Room allows you to sweep with Groudon, Calyrex, uh, you know, those are your two main max options under Trick Room. And so, one lead I actually love with this team is Espeon plus Vaporeon, because basically the Vaporeon here is super bulky and has pressure with Yawn, and it's really hard to basically knock out both Espeon and Vaporeon simultaneously, especially thanks to Focus Sash here. So it's like, okay, you either KO Espeon, but you ignore Vaporeon and a Yawn goes off, or if you can predict them to double up an Espeon and protect, even better, or you double up into Vaporeon, it's a free switch into your ground under Calyrex and Espeon gets Trick Room up. So, uh, Magic Bounce is also a really nice ability because it allows you to ignore Taunt, which, you know, is fairly common on Pokemon like Whimsicott and Incineroar, meaning that if you want to KO Espeon, you very often do have to just double up into it uh, rather than going for something like Taunt. Uh, the moveset includes Dazzling Gleam and Shadow Ball, so Shadow Ball is really good in a Calyrex Shadow Rider, and then Dazzling Gleam is just good damage across the board, chips away at things, and breaks Focus Sashes as well. I already talked a little bit about Vaporeon here, but this is just an ultra bulky Vaporeon set. One of the cool things about Vaporeon, especially thanks to its just pure water typing, is that there actually aren't that many Pokemon that are restricted and can hit it for super effective damage. Kyogre with Thunder is really the best example of something like can, but otherwise, you know, like Calyrex Shadow Rider, Groudon, Zacian, Lunala, Evoltal, uh, they actually really can't like KO Vaporeon that easily, and Vaporeon can apply a lot of pressure with Yawn, so this thing just often stays on the field for a very long time. You're also able to fish for burns with Scald, which is super valuable into things like Zacian and Groudon, and Baby Doll Eyes is a nice way to just decrease your opponent's attack. This actually has priority, so you can bring Zacian into neutral or Groudon to minus one, for example, immediately. So I really like Espeon Vaporeon as a lead, often with Groudon and Calyrex in the back. To round out the evolutions, we've got a Life Orb Flareon here with Flash Fire. In my experience, Flareon is the Pokemon that I brought the least when using the evolutions, but I think that this can be a strong sweeper, and you know, none of the other evolutions here are even potential Dynamax options, unless like you have some really niche scenario for it. Uh, but Flareon here can actually be a really strong max option, especially under Trick Room, right? You can go with like Espeon Groudon lead, just get early damage off with of Groudon, set up Trick Room, bring out Flareon, then Dynamax this. Uh, you've got Super Power and Quick Attack, and so Super Power turns into Max Knuckle, which is valuable in boosting Calyrex and Groudon's attack, and also just valuable into Incineroar. Quick Attack can finish things off and also turns into Max Strike for another means of speed control. The last evolution here is Glaceon, and this is mainly designed to activate weakness policy on Groudon because you've got Ice Shard. So it's Freeze Dry, Ice Shard, Yawn, Protect. Don't underestimate Glaceon's damage output, it's base 130, and Freeze Dry is actually really valuable into things like Evil Toll, Groudon, and Kyogre. Um, but the main use of it is, yeah, to get Yawn off into Groudon. Or sorry, Ice Shard into Groudon. Uh, Yawn is just really good disruption, similar to Vaporeon. 
One cool thing to talk about here is the Roat Berry, which actually, you know, uh, manages to deal an eighth of your opponent's uh, health if they hit you with a special attack. I had this one really niche scenario where it was like Kyogre against Glaceon on Groudon in the end game, and they went for like Origin Pulse. Uh, Roat Berry just does an eighth of their damage. Origin Pulse activated Weakness Policy on Groudon, and then Groudon just KO'd the uh, Kyogre with Precipice Blaze, which was really cool. So, yeah, it's a pretty niche item. I actually literally had to look it up when I saw that it was on the team, but it can be valuable into like Kyogre, for example. Finally, your Restricteds are Calyrex, Ice Rider, and Groudon. This is a more offensive Calyrex with White Herb instead of Weakness Policy, since the policy is on Groudon. And it doesn't have Trick Room, it actually has Seed Bomb, specifically to have a slightly better matchup into Kyogre, because as you can tell, Kyogre is fairly annoying to deal with here. That's also one reason why Vaporeon is really valuable on this team with Water Absorb, so you, know, you don't just get dunked on by Water Spouts consistently. And the final Pokemon here is Weakness Policy Groudon, so the main way you're going to activate it is Ice Shard from the Groudon, but you could go for Scald uh, from Vaporeon on Groudon, but obviously be careful about that because then you could burn yourself. So, yeah, the main combos I've gone with with this team so far, like uh, Vaporeon SP on lead with Calyrex and Groudon in the back. I've also gone with like Glaceon Groudon with Calyrex and one of the evolutions in the back. Uh, you could go like Groudon Flareon if they're naturally just slower than you and you think you can overwhelm them with offense and then close out the game with like an Espeon plus Calyrex combination. So there's just some ways to potentially run the team. But yeah, I am excited to dive into a brand new evolution team. Let's get started. Ooh, we've got our good old friend Rotom Wash in this one. Kyogre, Zashi, and Landris, Galarian, Moltres, and Whimsicott. So we can Dynamax, Calyrex, Ice Rider under Trick Room. This thing can probably sweep, but the question is how I get there. One lead that I often like with this team is Vaporeon, Espeon, so I can Yawn and then Trick Room. Yawn, Protect, Turn 1, and then Trick Room. So this is one approach we can take. I think another approach is just Glaceon plus Groudon lead, self Ice Shard activate policy immediately and go from there. But it falls to a lot of things. Will-O-Wisp, Rotom, Fake Tears or Charm from Whimsicott plus Kyogre combinations. Even Foul Play from Glarium Ultras and they've got Intimidate from Landorus. So I think I'm going to try the Trick Room approach in this game. I think inherently, as I mentioned in the team breakdown, one of the tricky things about this team is that Groudon and Calyrex generally are going to be slower, right? So, like, you're going to have to work harder than your opponent often to get a speed advantage. And really, the only way to gain a speed advantage with this team is through Espeon's Trick Room. But with Focus Ash, that often can give us a pretty significant advantage. And they're going to actually go with Whimsicott and Moltres. So, this is actually great. Um, basically, on turn one, what I'm going to do here is protect the Espeon and go for Yawn onto the Moltres slot. Then on turn two, I'm just going to angle to set up Trick Room with Espeon. One of the only downsides, even if you get Trick Room up with this combo, is that often it's hard for your opponent to actually get a KO, thanks to the Focus Sash on the Espeon, as well as Vaporeon being super bulky. So one thing I might want to consider is if I'm going for Trick Room next turn, it's just hard switching Vaporeon out immediately into the Calyrex Ice Rider. They're actually going to switch Whimsicott out, okay. Into Zacian. Hmm. Oh, that works. Although, with this, it actually meant I could have just set up Trick Room on turn 1 immediately. But I, I think the hope here is that this next turn... Um, yeah, they just end up switching the, the Moltres out since I'm going for Yawn onto that slot. Ooh, it's actually Nasty Pot. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, so getting Yawn off into that slot is good. Um, the debate here is basically, yeah, do I want to consider switching out Vaporeon? Because I'm going to click Trick Room here. And if I, if I could make the read let they, I don't know, try to KO Espeon, because they, they didn't really respect Focus Ash this last turn, right? So you could try to KO Espeon here with Zacian, and switch Moltres out back into Whimsicott, for example. I am fairly tempted to switch here, but single Fiery Wrath would kind of crush me. Mm, I think I'm going to go for the safer Yawn here, because I'm, I'm too worried about them actually staying in with Moltres, but they're actually going to switch out. Okay, that's fine. Back into Whimsicott, yep. Okay, and they actually protect with Zashin, cool, so I get a free Trick Room. Nice. Now is where the game gets interesting, I think. Okay. Uh... Like, from this position, I'm honestly down to just Dazzling Gleam and Scald this turn. I, 
I don't want to hard switch here. I think if I had switched last turn and they go for a taunt onto the Vaporeon slot, but nice. We um, went for Skull this turn, so that's fine. Burn would be pretty sweet, but I'm already already uh, fairly happy with this outcome. That's actually decent damage onto Zacian. And we get the burn. Nice job, Vaporeon. Excellent job. Espeon gets the Dazzling Gleam off. Really solid damage onto the Whimsicott. And here's Behemoth Blade, presumably onto the Espeon slot. And that's one of the uh, reasons why Espeon is like a really cool Trick Room user with this team, because of Magic Bounce, right? So, okay, awesome. Well, that works out fairly well for us. Um... How many turns of Trick Room do we have left? Three? So, okay, I gotta keep that in mind, but getting the burn onto the Zacian here is huge in itself. Like, the main thing is Zacian might survive another Gleam and Scald. I could double up on a Whimsicott for a KO here, probably. But I don't really think Whimsicott's really that much of a threat to me, and if I- like, Zacian was the main threat we needed to neutralize, because that really threatened both Calyrex. And they actually switch out. Oh, okay. Maybe into Kyogre? See, the thing is, I actually don't mind that, though, because this is, I think, probably your best Dynamax option um, for my opponent's angle right now, and by switching in, you're just taking a bu bunch of chip damage, and if you eat up a burn here again from Vaporeon, it's super bad. Yeah, not bad damage from Squad there, either. No burn this time around, that's fine. Espeon gets the Dazzling Gleam off. That's really good damage. Ooh, Wim's got his Endeavor! That's cool! That is not super, super common um, in this format, but very neat option. Okay. Two turns of Trick Room left. I'm just going to Gleam again here. This is what I mean, right? Like, by not switching out earlier, I've just been kind of stuck with both Pokemon, and I haven't really had the conviction to switch out, um, but that's okay. Whimsicott switches this time around, okay? Back out into Zacian, sure. Are they going to max Kyogre at this point, though? You just took, like, 40% with it. Yeah, they're not going to max it. Okay. So, at this point, max Moltres is the clear option from their end, right? And we get another burn with Vaporeon. Cool. So, we've just been slowly chipping away with our uh, evolutions here, but, I mean, we've done so much damage to both of their restricted, so I'll take it. <laughs> As uh, They actually go for Thunder rather than Origin Pulse, and not wanting to risk a miss there, which is fine by me. I think this is where the game gets really interesting, right? Because it's like, at this point, you're going to max Galaria, Moltres. It's, there's only one more turn of Trick Room left. So I can bring out Groudon or Calyrex Ice Rider. Um, I think I'd rather go into Groudon in this position. But I think basically the debate this turn is, do I want to consider Max Quake? Do I want to consider Max Rockfall to cover for a switch? They could just protect Zacian this turn. They could double protect here. Uh, I'm fine clicking Dazzling Gleam here, but the main question is what I want to do with Groudon. I guess the safest option is actually just Max Flaring here, right? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay, they stay in. So, like, we should just KO Zacian, which is good. This is going to be a close finish, essentially, because, like, they'll have, like, Wimsicott, Galarian, Moltres endgame. I guess Espeon might actually survive this turn. If it survives, then I can achieve an angle for another Trick Room with it, which is interesting. Yep, so Zacian protects. That's fine. I think Flare plus the burn damage ideally will do enough for the Zacian to faint after this turn. Yeah, I think so. Nice. Uh, the downside there is I could have gone for Max Quake and gotten a special defense boost, but I didn't want to Quake and have them switch out into Moltres and uh, not punish that at all. Uh, Kyogre actually does hang on with the Sliver there. Okay, they're going to Ice Beam. But the burns here should finish him off. It'll be Whimsicott plus Galarian Moltres. They'll have an extra turn of Dynamax relative to me. Kyogre faints. Yep. Special defense boost this turn. When, like, it doesn't help the Groudon out that much anyway. But, oh, Zacian hangs on with, like, 1 HP. Well, that's a little unfortunate. Um, That's definitely less than ideal. Interesting. They bring out Whimsicott. 
I'm not sure I agree with that decision. I think Moltres is always better to go into there. I'll take it though. Um, I think here I want to go for Protect and then Max Quake into Whimsicott. It's funny because earlier I was like, oh, I'm worried about them switching out, but here, like, I don't think you ever expect Quake onto the Whimsicott slot. And by getting a special defense boost while protecting Calyrex, beautiful, they stay in. Um, okay. And they go for Taunt to try to prevent Trick Room. Yeah. So I, I think Moltres was just the better option to go out into and then just, like, pressure me with um, Dynamax immediately from there. Especially with Zacian hanging on. Like, I was expecting to just KO Zacian with the Flare plus the um, burn damage, but... Now I get a special defense boost, which is huge. Calyrex should survive an attack. This should be a double KO. And then I can go for um, Rockfall plus Glacial Lance. And hopefully that'll be enough. And Moltres has to Dynamax here. I, I, actually, I guess where things get interesting is if with Moltres, like, you could just Max Guard, right? And I don't have... Like, I, I assume it's Weakness Policy on Moltres as well. So if you Max Guard, then there's two turns of Trick Room left. Or sorry, two turns of your Dynamax left. I do have a special defense boost with both though, so I expect to survive, but the the fear is activating obviously weakness policy plus berserk on this. Uh here I'm just gonna glacial lance and rockfall. We also have the advantage that maybe they think I have trick room, and so they're like, oh I have to deny trick room right now. I'm gonna just max Moltres and try to hope for a critical hit onto uh, the Calyrex. If they just attack Calyrex here, we should win the game, because I just get too much free damage off with both Pokemon without taking in, uh, a KO in return. Or without them taking a KO in return unless they crit. So we'll see if they opted for Max Guard. We know it's not Assault Vest given that we saw the Nasty Plot earlier. Let's see. Cool. They go for Darkness. We should survive thanks to the special defense boost from earlier. Beautiful. We actually took that so well. Way better than I expected. And this is huge because now it means, one, they can't go for Fiery Wrath anymore. Two, even if I activate Berserk, like you can only pick up a knockout onto one of two Pokemon. We might just get the knockout with this double up. If not, then I have to rely on... Oh, okay, that did so much damage. I'm fairly sure Glacial Land should KO. Vaporeon was so clutch for us in this one. I mean, it got multiple burns with Scald, right? Which um, made things a lot easier for me. So, yeah, it was Nasty Plot Weakness Policy in the end. That's the thing with this team, right? Like, I have to find ways to try to set up Trick Room. Um, and I think Vaporeon plus the uh, Espeon is just the most consistent combination for that. But, yeah, I think if my opponent brought Moltres out instead of Whimsicott earlier in the game, this would have been um, substantially more challenging. I'm not really sure how I would have fully played it out. Although, interestingly enough, yeah, Calyrex actually took those attacks a lot better than I expected. But, basically, the problem is if it was Whimsicott Moltres, I think I probably would have actually gone for, like, Protect and then Quake into Calyrex, maybe? Or sorry, into Zacian. Because, like, the problem is if I were to Rockfall there and activate Policy, it's really bad. And they could just Behemoth Blade and Max Darkness into my Calyrex slot. So, yeah. Uh, I think by them just giving me a free double KO uh, and then forcing it to be a 2v1, uh, the game was easier. But, yeah, I was hoping to not... Like, I was hoping to just KO the Zacian, right? Uh, and I ended up surviving with, like, 1 HP after the burn damage. So, I could have gone for Max Quick that turn. Like I said, I was just really worried about it switching into Moltres. And I was like, okay, if my opponent does switch into Moltres here, then we'll punish all of their potential Dynamax options really heavily. But, yeah, we get to bring Espeon and Vaporeon and get a win on the board with them. So, I am super happy about that. Oh, boy. Uh, Calyrex Sogaleo. Charizard, Thunderous, Tapu Lele, Whimsicott. This already looks like a nightmare. So, like, this is where Glaceon's really interesting because of the Rowat Berry. Which, as you can see, allows you to deal a little bit of damage to your opponent. And so it's really valuable into things like Kyogre and Calyrex. Basically, like, I, I also think this is one of those matchups where if I can get Trick Room up, we'll be in a really good spot, but that is really hard to guarantee. You could very easily just lead Calyrex plus Sogaleo from their end. If they do that, though, I do have an opportunity to just go Glaceon, Groudon, self Ice Shard, Activate Policy, Max Quake. I don't love this matchup, so I might be forced to do that, honestly. Ah, Calyrex is so bad if I don't get Trick Room up in this game. I also want to just give all the EV Lucians a shot in this episode, so. As crazy as it seems, I actually want to bring Espeon over Calyrex, or sorry, Flareon over Calyrex here, because, like, Calyrex just folds so easily. 
Uh, I mean, it's not like Flareon's really surviving much any either, though. But it's better into Soguleo. Alright, we'll give this a shot. Um, the logic here is with Glaceon Groudon, I can just self-activate weakness policy onto Groudon, and Groudon ideally can KO Soguleo, even at plus one defense. I'm hoping they just go for the um, Calyrex plus Soguleo lead. Okay, that is what we see. Okay. Uh, the other thing I could actually go for here is like protect Groudon and yawn into Soguleo. But the reason I don't love that, I mean, the other thing I have to worry about is also Will-O-Wisp from the Calyrex. So there's honestly a fair amount to worry about here. Because they could like Will-O-Wisp and Steel Spike Groudon on turn one. But I think I'm just going to go for self I try to activate Policy and Quake. Okay, let's actually think about this a little bit more. Like, if you were my opponent, you could actually just will o -Wisp Groudon and then Steel Spike Glaceon, no? I could protect Glaceon switching to Espeon. If I were them, I'd actually will o -Wisp and Steel Spike, but you know what? They're going to miss will o -Wisp. I've determined it. <laughs> uh, like, the, the play I was considering in order to beat the will o -Wisp Steel Spike play was Protect Glaceon, switch into Espeon, Magic Bounce, will o -Wisp goes into Calyrex, and then I can angle to set up Trick Room afterwards. But there's a lot that could go wrong with that. So here, it's like, they have to make the will o -Wisp play, and even if they go for it, if they miss, they are going to be in really bad shape. So, I, I just wanted to get the Glaceon Groudon combo out, and if they just go for Bulldoze, then even better for us, right? Ideally, they go for Bulldoze Steel Spike, that would be my dream, but... The question is, with Calyrex, like, do you have Will-O-Wisp? Um, but it makes sense, I, like, I would run Astro Barrage, Will-O-Wisp, um, Bulldoze Protect, as you said on that. So let us see. Okay, my shard goes off. Show me Bulldoze or a Mist Will-O-Wisp. There are two of three options I want to see here. Nice! <laughs> okay, now we just have to hope to KO Sogaleo. Like, they're probably going to Steel Spike to get a defense boost, but that's fine if I KO them in return. Okay. Sometimes you just got to do it for the content, you know? Steel Spike in a Groudon works for me. Nice, 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 nice. Okay. Now we're talking. Now I'm just really hoping we KO Sogaleo. Um, 76 attack EVs. They've taken a little bit of chip from Bulldoze. You have a defense boost. Let's see. No! It was so close. So close, so close, so close. Okay, that's fine. Um, oh, that is so sad, though. Uh, this turn is interesting, right? Because it's like, do you read into the Groudon Max Guard? <laughs> I could actually freeze dry into Ice Shard, maybe for a KO. I don't even know if that KOs. I think I want a Max Guard here, but it's honestly so obvious. This is where, by the way, attack investment, if Groudon were like max attack instead of 76 attack EVs, we we likely would have KO'd Sogaleo. So it's interesting commentary on like EVs. Right, I'm going to go for Freeze Dry plus Max Guard. Because like for my opponent's shoes, you're probably not worried about Glaceon's damage output whatsoever, right? Also, this is a fun interaction where you're going to see the um, Barry actually activate breaking Calyrex's Focus Ash. Oh, wait, sorry, no. The berry does not activate because of Calyrex's ability. <laughs> oh, I don't think Ice Shard KOs. Oh, that's so sad. That's so sad. Well, they're going to go for another Astral Barrage and then a Steel Spike. And I've got Quick Attack. Um, should I switch Groudon out? I don't think it's worth it. Okay, I'm going to yawn here, because I think in order to win the game, I need to set up Trick Room. So I'm going to yawn. 
Um, Quake into Sogaleo. Yep, so there's Astro Barrage. We'll survive with both. They go for Steel Spike. That'll be a KO'd Groudon. Oh, that was so sad. It was looking so good, too. But yeah, we just didn't have enough attack investment here. I wonder what the roll was on Sogaleo without any bulk. I have no idea. Like, I'm curious if they essentially had bulk or not. But basically, like, now what I'm hoping for is, okay, I get to bring Espeon out. And I'm going to look to try to sweep with Flareon under Trick Room. I guess if I brought Calyrex Ice Rider in the back here over Flareon, we probably would have had a better shot. But I just wanted to bring Flareon. It's more fun. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to Protect here and go for Trick Room. And basically hope that they're not worried about Focus Sash Espeon. But okay, well done. They stay in with Calyrex. That will probably be game over then. Unless, for some reason, they did not target Espeon here. But yeah, like, Calyrex and Sogaleo is so difficult to break through here. My best bet, honestly, I think was Glaceon Groudon, but... Uh, Vaporeon... Oh, they can miss Rock Slide here. That's really risky. Oh, did I hit? Yeah, I don't think you should ever click Rock Slide there, personally. I think you should always Sunsteel Strike. Because, like, Astro Barrage always KOs Glaceon, and it brings Espeon down to Focus Ash anyway. So we actually had a 10% chance to win there. It's just small things like that where you can think of ways to maybe, put, like, potentially optimize. Um, is there any way we win without Trick Room here? Probably not, because Flareon's just slower. I guess if they had Whimsicott Tapu Lele, there's, like, a slight chance. I'll go for Quick Attack and Ice Shard. Ah, oh, it's just so close. Yeah, I mean, basically, the other play I could have gone for was, like, Max Guard or Protect Route on turn 1 and Yawn into Sogaleo immediately. Does this even KO? Let's see. It's so low HP, but it's also, like, at plus 2 defense. <laughs> oh, they're trying their best, guys. They're trying their best. Yeah. What else could I have done in this matchup? Calyrex Ice Rider is really bad into this duo. I can't Dynamax Flareon. Vaporeon can't go for Baby Doll Eyes. It's a question of whether or not they have Max Lightning, I think, because in the end they had Rock Slide, right? So they probably didn't have Max Lightning, and so one approach could have been just going for, like, SB... I don't know, Yawn? But the problem is, like, Calyrex and Sogaleo is just too oppressive, so... I don't regret the way I played this. Like, we have to work hard to try to get wins, um, naturally, and... I think if we, you know, I don't know what the damage roll is, basically, from Groudon to Soglia, but if we get that KO on turn 1, like, we actually probably just win the game immediately, and I'm willing to take that bet, so, yeah. Even though it didn't work out for us, like, I don't think I actually would have changed too much about how I played it, right? And naturally, like, we're at a disadvantage, um, just given the leads, and, like, I don't have a really consistent way to beat them uh, with, with that duo, and I, I think I basically brought my best shot. Uh, but, yeah, the other approach would have been going for a, a, a Yawn user with Glaceon or the, um the Vaporeon, and then I guess the third approach would be leading Espeon plus something, and then, like, I could go Espeon Groudon and, like, I don't know, protect Groudon in Trick Room turn one, but the problem with that is that, like, most players are just gonna double up onto the Espeon in that position, so, yeah. It was just also sad, like, I ended up using, what, like, Max Quake into Sogaleo, it took, the Sogaleo took a Bulldoze, I went for Freeze Dry onto it, Ice Shard Quick Attack, and even with all five of those, it still couldn't KO the Sogaleo, so, I would think it had a little bit of bulk on it, but in the end, obviously, a defense boost and the quick attack and Ice Shard literally do, like, 2%. So, yeah. Either way, though, we got to bring Glaze down and play Arion out, so I can't complain. Final one here, and we've actually got Zacian Necrozma Dusk main, which is really interesting. Hmm, okay. Uh, Baby Doll Eyes from Vaporeon here, I think, is super valuable. I honestly want to max Flareon in this game. <laughs> I'm thinking of, like, a Vaporeon Groudon lead, Calyrex Flareon. I don't know, like, I kind of want to set up Trick Room with Espeon, but they also have Amoongus, which concerns me. Huh, I actually guess Glaceon Groudon in this game also isn't terrible, right? Yeah, it's fairly effective, actually, I think. Glaceon Groudon, Calyrex, and... I was talking about Baby Doll Eyes, but maybe I just go with Flareon? Uh, Baby Doll Eyes plus Yawn is really valuable here, though, I think, so. 
I actually think this this matchup is interesting. I think we actually could take multiple approaches. One is the trick room approach. We probably an SB on lead. Um, one is Dynamax Flareon next to Groudon. I just don't know how fast the Necrozma is going to be relative to us. Zashi and Necrozma is not a really common duo that I've experienced with. Maybe Thunder is Zashi. Okay. Um, yeah, that works. Like, I'm kind of down to just sell Fire Shard, activate Policy, Rockfall, Thunderous, turn one. They could, I don't know, go for Fly with Thunderous, though. I could also double protect here. Stall to turn to their potential Dynamax. What if I didn't max here and just self ice shard Precipice Blades? Is that kind of troll? Basically, like, I'm like, if I can knock out Zacian, then Necrozma becomes a more interesting Dynamax option. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for the Rockfall Ice Shard play. If I were them, though, I'd actually very much consider clicking Fly, but they're going to Dynamax, which I'm honestly happy to see. Uh, I think where this could be scary is if it's faster Thunderous and uh, Thunderous Max Knuckles. Allowing Zashin to get to plus two attack. It would make me so happy if they just KO'd Glaceon and I like KO Thunderous, because then it's a free switch into Vaporeon and I can baby dollize the Zashin. Maybe I should be bringing Flareon though. It's like now I'm like, what is Calyrex going to do for me in this late game? <laughs> I wish we could run two weakness policies. I'm just determined to get a win with Glaceon Ground on lead. Okay. I was like magically hoping that they would protect Zosh in there, but there's not that much incentive to. Okay. Nice. Okay, they just Behemoth Blade Glaceon, which I think is a really good outcome here, no? Because I'll just KO Thunderous now. Which is an amazing trade. And I get the um, Vaporeon in for free. I mean, th this is amazing. This is actually absolutely amazing, yeah. Um, this is where Vaporeon is so, so helpful as well for Baby Doll Eyes. Okay, that could not have played out any better. That actually is, I think, just the ideal turn one for me here, where I don't take that much damage with Groudon, and I get a free switch in, and I get a KO onto Thunderous. So, nice! Okay, we are in good shape right now. It's an excellent position for Vaporeon to come out. They do have multiple Intimidators in the back, Incineroar Landers, and they have a potential Amoongus as well. So we've got to watch out for all of those. We'll bring out Vaporeon for now. Amoongus is actually probably the most annoying to deal with, right? Because Baby Doll Eyes is priority. Is it just plus one? I actually don't remember, but they actually are bringing out Necrozma, which I am totally okay with. Okay, given this, um... Oh, Calyrex in the back. I don't know what their last one is. I don't... Do I need a baby doll eyes here? Because I could yawn, right? Like, why not just max quick Necrozma here and then yawn into Zacian? Because I would get a KO and then Zashin guarantees falls asleep the subsequent turn. I'm down for that. We should survive Behemoth Blade here. Oh, okay. It's, it's switching into Amoongus. That's fine. <laughs> I thought they were going to switch out into Landorus and like they baited me into quaking that slot, which is actually a brilliant idea. But I should survive this. Beautiful. I should KO Amoongus now, especially with Sand. That's actually huge. Um, and now I just get Yawn off successfully into Zacian. Beautiful. Yeah, I mean, my main question now is how fast the Necrozma is relative to Groudon. But I think this next turn, I just max guard with Groudon. 
I'm just I'm just glad we got Glaceon Grad on out. This Flareon would have actually been totally better for me in this endgame over Calyrex. I tried to do that one game earlier. That didn't work, but in this game it actually would have been the right call. I brought Calyrex though because I was worried about Amoongus. I mean, I guess Flareon's good into Amoongus as well. Yeah, in retrospect, what was I even thinking? <laughs> they also have Landorus and Thunderous, so I was like, Calyrex is good against a combo of those. But yeah, I'm going to just max guard here. I kind of expect Groudon to be faster than the Necrozma. Um, so I'm going to max guard Yawn this turn and then Baby Doll Eyes Presbus Blades next turn, I think. Actually, I don't know if I want to press this blades. Do I want to press this blades or fire punch? Hmm. I'll probably just go for blades. It's a one-hit KO on Tyther, I would expect. Thanks to us being at plus two. Okay, there's guard. Yep, they blade into Groudon. It's funny to see like the blade anim like or the text come out as um Groudon is literally moving its arms. And Photon Geyser, okay. I could also consider switching Groudon out into Calyrex this turn. To cover for the faster Necrozma option. But no, Zacian takes a guaranteed turn to sleep here. I think it's better to just attack. Yeah, so I'm just going to go for Blades here and Scald. We'll see how fast Necrozma is, but I don't know. I expect it to be slower personally. I think Vaporeon's been the MVP out of all the evolutions, though, for sure. Nice, we're faster. And Presbus Blades does not miss. Amazing. Okay, we actually don't KO the Necrozma. Maybe I activate Policy here, but that's fine. At this point, you are not KOing me, and you're going to fall asleep after this turn, and Glacial Lance will just finish things off from Calyrex. It's on Steel Strike. Cool. Yeah, I mean, turn one just worked out so well for us, and they actually didn't bring either Intimidator into this matchup, which is really uh, surprising to me, so I'll also gladly take that. But that's the idea behind the uh, glaceon Groudon combination, right? You can just get a one-hit KO onto something like Thunderous, for example, and Scald actually just gets the KO there. Cool. So, we never needed our final Pokémon, but I do wish I gave uh, Flareon a, a chance to shine here. <laughs> but in the end, we got to bring all of the Evolutions at some point. We racked up a couple of cool wins with it as well against uh, various team compositions. The Vaporeon... Easily, I think, the best member here with its ability to absorb water-type attacks, you know, from Water Spout, for example. Uh, that, that wasn't really super relevant here, but, you know, that's one of the reasons why I think it's a cool pick in the format. And then, of course, more importantly, having the uh, the Yawn and just being so bulky with uh, Leftovers as well, it's really difficult to just KO easily. And it often diverts pressure away from, you know, its teammates. But Glaceon was super important in this game because uh, I needed it to activate the weakness policy, right? And essentially what I was worried about in turn one of that game is if my opponent just doubles up onto Groudon instead, I just eat up so much damage where it's like okay i get the policy off i ko thunderous but then where do i really go from there the idea would have been to bring out vaporeon baby doll eyes maybe hope to survive a behemoth blade and then quake into lazashi and slot as well but yeah i actually think um like even though we ended up winning that game in a best of three like let's say we were making adjustments i would actually probably drop calorix for flareon because i think flareon was infinitely more valuable into what they brought in that game in the necrozma the zashian and the amoongus slot as well so yeah Anyway, that's going to be it for this one. So thank you so much, as always, for watching as we wrap up our time here in Pokemon Sword and Shield. And I hope you enjoyed another Evolution team here. So check out the team and creator down in the description below. Leave a like if you enjoy. Don't forget to answer the question of the day. And I'll see you all next time. All right. Peace.